like the trash piling up around you, or maybe you feel suffocated because of all the trash, because of how it smells and it makes you feel uncomfortable. Or maybe you ever feel like uh, the quality of life decreases because of trash. Maybe you ever feel sick. Well, I'm Anna Sharanda and I'm from Urban Middle Class Grade 12, and today I'm going to be talking about trash. So, from a research, it is stated that around 1,600 tons of trash each day goes to the back bowl. That's a lot of trash, right? And not just that, but there's also 352 tons of plastic waste that also goes to the back bowl each day. So, and that's a lot of trash. So from this, we can conclude that actually there is still a lot of people who still don't really, who are not really aware of the situation, or maybe they don't really care about the situation. So, one of my classmates actually brings a plastic bottle every, a plastic bottle every day to school, and I've seen a few of my friends like that. And every day they would use, they would bring a new plastic bottle and they would throw it away at the end of the day. And my other friend actually sells food, but the food is placed in a plastic container. So every day, his customers would have to eat them and then throw them away. That's such a waste of plastic, right? It would be so much better if they could bring something like a reusable container or maybe a reusable bottle or a bottle that will save the earth a lot more, right? So I think this is such a serious problem, and I think we should do something about it, and it is something that is urgent, in my opinion. So, do you guys think that the unhygienic environment actually really impacts the overall well-being, the well-being of us, the well-being of um, citizens in general, or maybe, do you think that it will <coughs> impact something like our health and stuff like that? So, uh, because of this, because of my curiosity, I decided to do a research. My research is going to be talking about trash in Surabaya. So, I conducted this research in a base of Google Forms, and uh, my Google Forms is shared to people all over Surabaya. And my Google Forms is intended for people who are ages between 14 to 22 years old. And then, my Google Forms is for people who have stayed in Surabaya for over one year. And uh, my research method is actually quantitative data and also qualitative data. So, quantitative data, I use this method to ask my uh, questionnaires uh, to ask my respondents about what they think. They would be able to choose from a few different options so they can choose later on. And then qualitative data is for them to answer their opinions. I would be asking a few questions for them to answer their opinions. So some of my few questions were, the first one is, how can they describe the level of environmental cleanness in Surabaya? There were five options in total. There were very clean, clean, moderate, dirty, and very dirty. So 1.7% actually answered with very clean, which is a good thing. But another 20% answered with clean only. And most, more than half of the respondents answered with moderate, which is 53.3%. And then 25% of them answered with dirty, which this is kind of concerning, right? And luckily, no one answered them very dirty. So my next question was, how someone they know actually experience such as health issues or maybe they feel sick because of the situation? So my options were no and yes, someone I know. Luckily, 46.7% actually answered with no, while the other 58.3% answered with yes, someone I know. So, and then the next question was, do they think that the unhygienic environment impacts the overall quality of life? So there were three options in total. The first one is negatively, no impact, and yes, positively. So 81.7% uh, actually answered with negatively, which is why I think this is such a concerning topic. And then 50% actually answered with no impact, and the other 3.3% answered with yes, positively. To back up my questionnaire before, I also conducted an interview with two experts, which they are from the first one is Mr. Barcigo. He is from Rotomo Sororacho and he is the head of the department. And there, Mr. Barcigo was so kind of him to share his experience there and also share on the process of how to compose the trash that goes to there each day. 
So he showed us around. There were a few things that uh, they usually do every day. So the first one is they have this big roof, and then it, inside there is a few different boxes, and there is it's used to compose the trash there. So what they do is first they pile up the trash, and then they pile up the leaf, and then the trash, the leaf, and so on. And then after a few days or a week, they would move it and flip it to the other side, to the next box. And then they would repeat the process over, over and over again for about a month until the waste becomes a smaller particle. So because the waste is being degraded by the leaves, the waste becomes a smaller particle. And then they use this big giant sleeping machine. It is very loud. And then uh, they put the trash inside the sleeping machine and they would, the sleeping machine would degrade the trash even more so it becomes a smaller particle. And then after that, uh, they harvest these these so-called black soldier flies. These flies are twice or even twice the size of a normal fly that you can see around the house or maybe you see around the roads. So these flies actually started off being really really small, such as like they look like sand at first, but when, as they grow older, they become really big. So these flies are feed with these trash that were. Uh, saved in the machine before. So these uh, trash becomes food for these older flies. And then uh, my second expert was I also interviewed Mr. Peter Hamdali. He's uh, the co-founder of, he's one of the co-founders of Trash and Treasure Surabaya. So this organization actually focuses on campaigning and promoting uh, so, uh, promoting to <coughs> A cleaner environment for Surabaya. So they really emphasize on like a promoting campaigns, and they even went to different schools to promote campaigns for this certain topic. So uh, Mr. Vincent actually thinks that uh, with further trash piling, it actually can harm the environment because he thinks that it can make people who are vulnerable to diseases and make, make people who are vulnerable to sickness, and he thinks that other complications can happen too. So, which is why I think this is such an important uh, topic we can talk about. So, because of all of these complications and all of these problems, so what are the solutions we can do? Even as uh, someone young, I don't think it stops us from doing anything. I don't think it stops us from doing something that can uh, improve the situation better. So, uh, the first thing is I think that we can make campaigns. Uh, we can conduct campaigns, maybe in schools or maybe in work, or maybe in social media platforms, as so, uh, social media platforms actually spread really quick. So I think it is a really good example. So we can promote campaigns. <coughs> and then with the citizens being more aware of the problem and situation, they can be more aware. And with the awareness of citizens, the governments can also make regulations. With the governments and citizens working together, uh, it will be easier for us to achieve a better, a better quality of life because there will be less trash. So the other things that we can do is also such as reducing the use of single-use plastics, such as like the story I mentioned earlier before. We should stop. We should try to use single. Uh, we should stop and try, try to use plastic, uh, things that are reusable, such as like reusable uh, lunch box, reusable bottles. So we can wash them every day and use them again. So we don't have to uh, worry about uh, throwing plastic waste every day since it would, it would harm the environment. So maybe by doing these measures, the 350 pounds of plastic before will decrease by time. So we, don't, we won't have that much uh, plastic waste anymore. So the next thing that we can do is also maybe join in community cleanups like organizations like Trash and Treasure earlier, like we can join organizations which promote campaigns and stuff like that. And we can also join on community cleanups to help clean the environment and maybe uh, reach a better environment. So, since as citizens of Surabaya, people who live in Surabaya, uh, we need to protect Surabaya. So, uh, there's this quote from Dalai Lama. It is a collective and individual responsibility to preserve and tend 